For our next presenter, he is an academic professional and researcher based in Cebu City, Philippines. He earned his Bachelor of Arts in Political Science degree with cum laude honors from Cebu Normal University and his Master of Arts degree in Public Administration at the same institution. Currently, he is a doctorate in Public Administration candidate and actively participates in co-authoring various research studies covering topics ranging from leadership styles to labor issues. He currently serves as a faculty member at Cebu Normal University, specializing in the Department of Public Governance within the College of Arts and Sciences. Let us give a round of applause for Mr. Luigi Von Rama Mendoza. Hello, good morning everyone. It's actually a pleasure to talk to you about the two things I love in life. First, food, and the second one is politics. Um, before I start my presentation, I'd like to thank first, of course, the Cebuano Studies uh, for having this event or so for sponsors coming from the um, National Commission of the Culture and the Arts. So yeah, <laughs> that's me next slide, please. Before to that, okay. So we actually have this practice at our home, maybe in Arama, in Cebu City. We, my Lola would always tell me, um, no hables politico in la mesa, which translates actually in, which translates actually in English, please, no discussion of politics on the table because it's actually, politics actually more than just a more unifying force. It actually div divides actually the people eating whenever you started actually discussing things that actually goes opposite of the political spectrum, right? Okay, so we also observe that, but right this morning, next slide. I'm so sorry, Lola, <laughs> because I will talk about politics and food. Okay, when I first um, given this opportunity to talk about politics and food, it made me actually wonder how can politics any related to food? Then I realized that it's not actually much of a thought because if you realize on the next slide, always remember that this person, <laughs> you're familiar with him of course, he is Magellan. Um, he actually traversed oceans tapos napadpadiri sa dagat dari sa Pilipinas for one sole reason, looking for the Malacca Island, and that's actually the Spice Island. So reason for coming here, pagkaun, lamas, right? And then that lamas, by the way, that happened sometime in the 15th century, right? Now, what about right now? How can we relate food and politics? Next slide. Well, um, prior to that, Okay, well, in my case, when I try to relate actually politics into food, I come up actually with this concept, and that's looking into actually shomai. Are you familiar with shomai? Yeah. Who among you here have eaten one? Okay, so, naganata. <laughs> so, the funny thing here is, that's shomai, or we are much familiar with this term here, that is spelled in Cantonese, and there's are actually its various... Um, What's this? Variations, but it's pronounced as the same, and that's shomai or shomei. You do not know if you'll agree, right? Okay, so anyway, for those who have not eaten yet shomai, that's shomai. Okay, next please. So what about shomai? Um, when you talk about shomai, there's actually one place in Cebu that we actually connote shomai with, and that's tisa. Do you agree? In fact, you do not like to eat one if you feel like it's not from Tisa. Am I correct? Yeah. Right? Okay, so let's try to trace what's actually the steaming hot socio-political beginnings of Shomai Festival because I just recently known there is this festival held in one of the barangays, one of the 80 barangays in Cebu City. The newest festival, actually, in the entire province. Okay, and that's Shomai Festival in Tisa. Let's see on saan nila hang socio-political beginnings. So, when we talk about food in relation to um, its signification to politics, we can actually argue using the following um, concepts and construct. Food is an essential aspect of human existence and it is intricately linked with various economic, um, socio-political dimensions. Not much about politics, um, not much about economics because when you know, you know food, 
right? Okay, I think you cannot eat here in the city if you do not have money. Pero how about politics and the social, um, the social political dimensions? Second, food as both biological necessity and a cultural symbol becomes actually a lens through which we can examine power dynamics. Always remember that most of the wars actually done in the international arena was because they wanted actually to conquer a territory because there's much large abundance of food source for that, right? Okay. Uh, by the way, that picture is, um, that's actually a stall's um, place in one area and this is actually a Buddha fight as one of the activities during Shomai Festival. See? Next, please. Okay, so Tisa is known for a uh, street vended pork, and that is now what we know Shomai. According actually to Ponzalan et al. in 2023, Shomai is a street food now, okay? More than just a mere dim sum in the past. And it become primarily a reason of the visit of both local and international students. Tourist. I could still recall there was a time Vice Ganda visited actually one of the Shomayans at Tisa, and it, it has become actually sensationalized. More so, it has been featured by a lot of international tourists eating actually shomai in Visa. This kind of gastro tourism has become the major economic activity in the place with which the livelihood of the local depends on. Nice, please. So, for everyone's information, so when you talk about Visa, um, Tisa actually, again, is one of the 80 barangays in Cebu and they are now the very barangay who is doing actually Shomai Festival and they held it every third Sunday of the month of September. Next, please. Now, the question here is, so why study Shomai Festival? Now, I will throw back the question, I will throw actually the question back to you. Imagine, the place is named after the fruit and that's Tisa. Are you familiar with Tisa fruit? <laughs> Okay. However, the patron saint there is San Lorenzo Ruiz. But how come their festival actually is about Shomai? What kind of sorcery is this? Because if you think about it, it's gonna be Tisa festival. Or much more, I think it made sense if San Lorenzo Ruiz festival. But no, they didn't do that. They actually chose Shomai. So what's with Shomai festival? Okay. Now let's proceed. So these are actually my objectives. I just wanted to explore the celebration of Shomai Festival in Barangay Tisa, Cebu City, and I wanted to look into the following three. First, let's try let's try to trace the origin of Shomai Festival. Second, describe the festival's annual celebratory activities and its sustainability. Because imagine there was actually a two-year gap. Um, due to pandemic, but how come in the year 2022 they were actually able to revive that newest festival in the province? And last one is relate to the captured experiences of local tourists in a deduced things matter. So that's actually the actual Shomai festival in a picture. Yes. So for my method, if it's of course a qualitative, I do ethnography. So with ethnography, I really have to go to Tisa and live with, their, live with the people there for the entire 10 days of celebration. And of course, I utilize narratives and actual observation as qualitative data gathered through interview. Next, please. As for my key informants, I've divided them into three. I have my... Um, key informant, my key informant are the politicians in the barangay, um, those incumbent politicians, followed by the casual informants, those Shomai vendors. And last one, I have my general informants, the local and international um, tourists coming actually there just to dine or eat. Next. Still part of my method, um, of course, for my analysis, I used, of course, I, I um, used pseudonym to keep all the <laughs> information and then do thematic analysis later until I reach data saturation. Next. Okay, so for my RRL, here are as follows. Let me do a, a run through. Peterson 2020 explained that the massive scale of ubiquity and the sheer age of many festivals in the Philippines reflects the history of colonization. Agree? Meaning to say most of the celebrations we do actually in Cebu was actually a reflection of us being colonized by 
and of the foreigners. Second, moreover, Gonzalez and Dave 2017 showed that in his result that the community respondents strongly agree that festival helps in the preservation of local culture. Of course, I think it will strengthen actually the presentation of Ma'am not talking about Kakanin. Next, in addition, Mapantay at Alinair 2014 shared in his study that the respondents strongly agree that one of the social cultural effects of festival is to provide unity in the community. Do you think? Meaning to say, when you do festival, it's as if actually you are pulled by an invisible force, united as one. That's so nice. Last one is, furthermore, according to Masena and De Guzman, 2020, noted that festival evoke a pleasant emotion. Who among you here felt that? Can I talk if you hear the drums, um, see the balloons, the banderitas, sa mga streets, you actually have this pleasant feeling felt no, in your heart, and that's again because of one, that's actually one of the significations of festivals in the Philippines. Second theme. Okay, so let's see how Shomai, as a basis of local gastro tourism, Fernandez 2019 said that food was among the um, humble, um, humble but important culture bearing object. Of course, that again will strengthen the study of mom. Next, Alonso in 2019 narrated that as early as 1920, imagine that Cebuano culture dictates what that when food was served to an important visitor and guest, the cuisine of choice will always be Chinese. Basically, daw be, kung mapista ta, kasagaran daw atong kutahi Chinese. <laughs> Patray sa nato, no? Your favorite dumpia, your favorite pansit, and among others, ano sa naana will always be, of course, your shaman. Next. Uh, for, um, by the way, take note that um, this was documented in a book that my loyal readers already know, and the title of the book is Lagda sa Pagluto in 1924. Accordingly, that's actually the first and the only cookbook written in Cebuano language. Of course, the Cebuano study can verify this fact, no? Next, um, C, in the year 2012, said that shomai in the Philippines meals are ritualistic. Ritualistic in what sense? Because people actually gather and share their food at the same time, meaning to say, if you are to compare lichon to shomai, it's easy actually to share oh, shomai o oh, kaon ka, kesa sa o oh, lichon o oh, kaon ka dira o. Oh. Right? So, mas dali siya, mas naay meaning mo kaon. So, tip, uyab uyab, okay, that ang shomai yan, ayaw na nang inasalan, right? Okay, next. Okay, so these are for my results and my discussion. I divided it into three. And through lagi. First, of course, finally, we'll see the origin of Shomai Festival. Reason. Okay, next. The festival's annual celebratory activities and last one is culture experiences. Next, please. Now, the funny thing is, I have found out when I do the study that the reason why actually politicians conducted the first ever Show my festival in the year 2014. It was actually done because of political advantage. You'll know the reason later. Political siya, meaning to say, it's kind of ironic because most of the festivals in Cebu, they actually do it to celebrate about the harvest in honor of patron saint. This one, political. Next, and to establish local social identity. Let's see on the following narratives. Like, for example, according to in format 1-2, Three and five. They mentioned Tisa, a barangay in Cebu, has always been mistaken for its neighbor Labangun. So when the village celebrates its first fiesta in honor of San Lorenzo Ruiz, Ruiz it made sure that visitors would know Tisa by holding its first Shomai festival for 10 days to showcase its political products. Sato pa, they made actually um, Shomai festival because they just wanted to be politically divided or to be recognized separately from Barangay Labangon. This is very political, right? Next, accord, um, and it made sense because, by the way, whenever you look into the map, that, that one there in the entire or or, um, orange area, that's Tisa, and these are its boundaries. We have Guadalupe and Buhisan at the top, tapos followed by Kiyot and Punta Princess at the bottom, yes, a side niya kay Labangon. Pero ang always dyan niyang kontra will always be Labangon. Okay, next narrative. In fact, according to informant 2, 3, and 5, some residents would write down their address as 
ti sa labangon when paying the real property tax, ay la, ay itanong, sa ito pa, when you pay your tax, you write on your um, paper, ti sa labangon, so who gets the tax here? Ti sa po labangon, political problem, right? Okay? Next, Cebu City, right? But, of course, with the new ruling of Mandanas Garcia, it will later then divided into the barangay level. So it's better that they, they will be distinguished appropriately. Next, last one. According to informant one, four, and five, they share that we are even big, we are even bigger than Labango. Meaning to say, don't try to compare Tisa because we're bigger than them in terms of the population. Let's see. Next slide. So these are actually the population. I got this from Phil Atlas. And it made sense because at the top you have 47,000 residents and then followed by 32, um, by Labangon, Punta Princesa, 22, and the rest. Okay, next. Okay, now, with, so, next slide, please. Okay, so on the second theme, um, next slide, please. Okay, so as to the reason, um, the unique thing about Shomai Festival being a new festival is their activities also is kind of unique. Unlike, um, they describe it as worthwhile. When you say worthwhile, meaning to say it's not just fun, that is something actually that you can get physical and mental um, well-being out from the activities. And these are the activities that actually people in TISA like about. Next. So these are the usual activities done in fiesta, but more than that, there's the following. Random lang, next slide please. <laughs> Nang magzumba, na may biking, na ay mag theoretical driving free course, na ay mag good fight, na ay nag music fest, na ay nag street party. Tell me, na ay festival nga na ay mag biking, na ay festival nga mag zumba o mag hatag o theoretical driving. It's kind of unique and that's how they define Worth one. Next slide lang. Random na lang during pictures. Next, that's them doing Zumba. Next, that's them doing cycling. Next, that's them actually doing free theoretical driving. Festival hat. Next. Um, Budul fight. Next. Okay, so music fest. Next. And of course, you lose half of your life actually if you have not done sad sad in Shom and in Tisa, I'm telling you, it's one of the fun things to do in life. Next, a slide. For my conclusion, I do not know if you agree, the social political intricacies of the urban barangay Tisa is reflected on food, and that is Shomai, which further reveals that local colors of its present day citizens through the promotion of new practice Shomai Festival. A slide na lang. So, sa to pa, when my Lola said, actually nga, please do not talk about politics on the table. I think I have now a new mantra and that's, on the contrary, let's talk politics on the table, but this time with Shomai. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sir Luigi Von Rama.